Smith, Malcolm Crosby and John Byrne all plotting a shock for Howard Wilkinson and his men. Nick Collins reports. Oxford, the city of the dreaming spires, steeped with tradition, world famous as a seat of learning, but hardly a hotbed of football. FA Cup fourth round day changed all that. The manor ground packed to the rafters for the visit of Howard Wilkinson's Leeds United, bidding to lay a recent FA Cup jinx. Round five had eluded them for some time. In their way, Oxford boss Dennis Smith won defeat in six games with a couple of aces up his sleeve. Assistant manager Malcolm Crosby, the man who steered Sunderland to the 92 final, helped by the goals of John Byrne. He scored in every round to the final. At Sunderland, uh, we came to Oxford on the way to Wembley. So uh, hopefully, Oxford are going to carry on uh, where we left off at Sunderland. Fine sentiments, but the task facing Oxford still a huge one. So with Byrne looking to win back his Republic of Ireland place, the stage was set for a terrific cup tie. We weren't disappointed. Oxford took the game to Leeds from the start. Joey Beecham outwitted Tony DiRigo here and tested keeper Mark Beanie early on. Leeds responded with a flashing header from Gary Speed that was only inches wide. Then Oxford took the lead, skipper Jim Magilton beat the offside trap and crossed for Alex Dyer to drive low past Beanie. A great moment for Dyer, he wasn't certain of his place beforehand. First blood to the underdogs. Magilton's final ball was perfect and Dyer's right foot shot bang on target. Immediately the injured Rod Wallace was replaced by Steve Hodge, though the Leeds midfielder's entry was slightly delayed by the chain he had on round his neck. Harrow referee David Ellery, obviously not keen on players wearing jewellery. Well, Hodge didn't have long to wait to get into the thick of it, diving in as Speed's header was bundled off the line. Back came Oxford, Magilton's corner was only partially cleared. Nick Cusack flicked it back in, and Matt Elliott squeezed his shot in off the post. 2-0 to Oxford. Elliott a lifelong Leeds fan, but he still enjoyed that moment. The big defender scoring for the second round in a row. Cusack does well with his header here. Leeds appeal vainly for offside, and Elliott's left foot does the rest with a little help from the woodwork. Leeds two down. Now a what happened next situation. Mick Ford and Gary McAllister in hot pursuit. The poor old linesman gets in the way. Happily, everyone recovered eventually. And Leeds showed signs of perking up too before half-time. Speed slamming the ball in to reduce the arrears. His tenth goal of the season. Dorigo's high cross had caused the initial problems in the Oxford defence. Anton Rogan actually wins the ball but directs his header straight to Speed. Who's deadly with his left foot from there. So half-time 2-1 and for Wilkinson, food for thought. Early in the second half the turning point. Cusack cleaned through, but Beanie spread himself brilliantly to save. After that let off, Leeds stepped up a gear, and defender Elliott was booked for this foul on McAllister. McAllister got up to take the free kick himself, but was thwarted by Phil Whitehead. A brilliant save. It proved only a temporary respite, because from the corner, although Oxford cleared it, the ball went straight back to Strachan, who dispatched it into the middle again for David Wetherill to bury the header. 2-2, and a great entry by Wetherill, who'd not long been on the field as a substitute for the injured John Newsom. Pinpoint accuracy from Strachan and Wetherill, head and shoulders above the Oxford defence. Leeds pressed hard now for the winner, a wicked deflection, and Whitehead again the saviour. Smith despairing of his defence, as Whitehead had to produce one more outstanding save, this time from David White. Well worth another look, brilliant reflexes from Whitehead. So, 2-2 it finished, defender Wetherill, the unlikely super sub hero. The last thing the gaffer said to me was go and get us a goal. Uh... I mean, obviously it was just a straight swap at centre half. His main intention weren't for me to go and score, but you know that's how it turned out. Now I gather it wasn't your first touch, but it couldn't have been far away from it. No, it, pretty soon after I came on, wasn't it? Uh, a bit of a dream for me, really. Uh, you know, coming off the bench and uh, scoring the equaliser. Newsom was injured, and I said, "Go on, go on. I think you'll score." 
and uh, he did score. Uh, so, uh, overall, you know, we're satisfied. Once you're 2 0 up, then, you know, you should be able to hold on to that. Um, we're not experienced enough to be have been in the lead, I don't think, of late, to, to be able to do that. Uh, we started to knock it too long, didn't keep the ball well enough, and perhaps pushed too many people forward at times, looking for a third one, instead of just saying, OK, we're in the lead, let's hold on. Um, but Nick Cusack's had the best chance of the game, which could have made it 3-1, which made, would have made a big difference. But fair play to Leeds, they went two down, but they showed good character. They showed why they're such a good side, they kept playing, they kept doing the right things. We didn't close the crosses well enough, and we paid for it. All square then at the Manor Ground, the replay at Ellen Road on Wednesday week. Final score, Oxford 2, Leeds 2. And really it was a tale of two keepers and there were some terrific saves in the second half, so we'll take another look at those. First of all, Gavin, this was a save by Mark Beanie. That's right, he's, he did spread his body very well there. He stayed on his feet and, and he parried the ball out. Get them in it there. And then there were three brilliant saves by uh, Phil Whitehead of Oxford. Yeah, I mean, Gary McAllister's deadly in those situations, and that was looking like it was going in the top corner, and he's got across to it well and tipped it over. Again, backpedalling here. And he's done, he's shown great agility there just to sort of get back and, and tip it over again. Do you think it was one of those cup times that could have gone either way? Yeah, it looks to be that way on, on the, the highlights. That's another good save there. I mean, it looked like it was, it was a great game to, to watch for if you were an impartial spectator. Um, and, and that's the great thing. Um, I think sort of Dennis Smith was right when he said that, that Leeds showed that they were a good side by the way that they came back uh, from being two down. And, um, you know, they'll have their work cut out when they go out there, but um, you never know, these, these things happen. But if you look at their league positions, I mean, Oxford are right down the bottom, really, of, of the first division and yeah. Leeds are, are going well in the league. So, I mean, that, that's obviously the magic of the cup, isn't it? it brings them Exactly. Together. It's something, you know, it's a one-off games and uh, teams, you know, from the lower leagues raise their games on the day and uh, pull off the shocks that we, we've been seeing over the last couple of weeks. We look forward to the replay at Elland Road in 10 days' time. So.